how do you create a white base and how do you choke or trap the underbase so you don't see any white peeking out? We don't want to see any Oreo cookie prints here. So choke, trap, what do those terms mean? Choking our new white base that we're going to create means finding a way to remove a sliver of the design's edge so the top color can overlap it. In this way, you can also create a small gap between two different colors. In the case of our white base, we want the top colors to overlap and hide the Oreo white center. Trap means adding a stroke or another means to cause the edge of two colors to overlap. In the case of the white base, the top color would be spread a little, adding a stroke that will then overlap the edge of that white. Let's clean this file up a bit, remove this version of the goldfish, and work with a single artboard. So we're just going to select all. We're going to delete. I'm going to click this. I'm going to click delete. I am now going to remove excess layers. I don't need that anymore. Turn these off. Let's just go ahead and select all of these and we will delete them. Next, I'm going to change the size of my artboard. Looks like we're at 13 wide because my paper size, my film size is 13 by 19. I'm gonna make this 12.75 and this 18.75. Now I won't need that full size, but we're gonna start there. Next, we're going to center my design here and resize that background just a little bit. Next, let's grab my registration marks. I have that in a file right over here. So I'm going to click Command A for Select All. I'm going to click Command C to copy. Go back into my Goldfish file, recenter this a little, and then click Command V to paste. I'm gonna move these over here to the side a little bit. Now that I have all the elements here that I need to start with creating a white base, we have a couple of things to look out for. Number one is our design at final size. And what is the center of this design? And once we find the center, is the design weighted evenly? So let's see just how big our design is. Select all of that. Deselect the background. There's a couple of ways I can do that. I can either lock my layer here or with everything selected, I can hold down the shift button and click and left click on the background color there in order to deselect it. Now, the first thing I notice is that my bounding box, this blue line here, is bigger than my design. So that tells me that I have a, right there, I have a stray dot. So what I need to do is remove that stray dot. Come on, delete. Simply click delete and there it goes. Select this again, deselect the background. And now we're going to go over here to transform. You can find transform in your window up here. I happen to have a bunch of windows already open and it's all alphabetical. So you can see transform right there. So let's see the size of our design. 11 by 13 and a half. That's a pretty good size. I'm not so sure want to go that big a design so let's make this 10 wide and that equates to 12.3 to that's fine so, oh looks like I did not have something selected so we'll undo that select again make sure the background is deselected and then do this again there we go 10 inches wide excellent since it's all together I'll just move this here and then I'm going to group this briefly. I'm going to hit Command G. So now when I click it again, it's all one piece. So my, now what I'm going to do is I'm going to start to place some center lines. And I'm going to look at one, making sure we are centered. And then I'm going to look at the overall design. Is this design weighted evenly? Like, do I have a bunch of extraneous stuff over here like it, if we had some text or something would I center the design because the text is over here or would I center the design to the design and let the text fall over to the side 
These are decisions that we want to make here before we place our registration marks. Now that I have my center line, I'm going to do this. I'm going to place a guideline at the very top of my design and I'm going to reposition my rulers. If you're not sure how to pull up rulers, the shortcut is Command R. There, make my rulers go away, and now I'll make them come back. Command R. So I've zeroed out my rulers here, and what I want to do, I'll zoom in a little bit. I want to place another line one inch above my design. I personally, and this is something that I have been doing uh, over many years, uh, maybe decades at this point, uh, it's a stand for me. It's a standard placement of where I put my registration marks. Your shot may be different. The goal of this is just to standardize your placement of your registration marks, which then follows through to standardizing placement of your design on your on your screens and on your press and other things. Stuff that isn't truly important here, but since we will be taking this design to press, I'm going to follow through with all of my habits. Next, I'm going to drag that and place that. Hopefully center, let's take a look. Did I succeed? Not quite sure. Let's take our background, make it a little bit smaller. I'm technically a smidgen off a of perfect center. You know what? We're gonna roll with that today. All right. Now we have our design at our final printing size. I have my registration marks placed. This from here to here is 10 inches wide and the design is 10 inches wide. I also like to place my registration marks in the four corners of my design. I have one in the center. Instead of a line, I use a registration mark. You may use either, but my registration marks will always be in the four corners of my design. It is far easier to register the four corners of a box than any other potential placement for your registration marks. All right, now that that's placed, let's get started on our white base. First thing we want to do is create a new layer. Let's drag this up to the top. And I'm going to go ahead and lock the background there. Does that include our registration marks? It does include our registration marks. Registration marks are here on this layer. Next, we're going to select the whole design. We're going to copy and then paste it into our new layer. We're going to use paste in front, command F to make sure it's in the exact same spot as the layer we copied it from. Selecting all, copy, command C. I'm going to turn this off, turn that and click that layer and then command F, paste in front. And there's our design. Now I'm going to turn this layer on and this one off and on. And that confirms that everything is placed in the same spot. We're not seeing any shift in our design. What we want to do here is isolate all of the white and the color that needs to become our white underbase. You can see that this design has a couple of layers. Here's an out, you know, we have a black circle here that's under the whole thing. Otherwise, the design is fairly well cut out from each other. This is a good example of a design to work with. Now let's go through a quick process to remove the black and see what's left behind. I'm going to turn off this layer. I'm going to select this. And I'm going to go over here to Pathfinder and I'm gonna use this function called divide. What this does is this is like creating a jigsaw puzzle. It knocks every element out from underneath it. Um, so we're going to knock these all out. Looks like we're done. Yeah, I'm going to ungroup. And what I can do here is now anything that was underneath another color has been knocked out. So if there is any remnant of any bit of this color design underneath the black, the black has now cut it out perfectly, just like a jigsaw puzzle would. So I'm going to select that, go select, same, fill color, I'm going to remove that and turn off the background. So these are all the leftover pieces that we would want to turn into our white base. I'm going to go backwards in history with Command Z 
to before I knock things out. Nope, need to go back a little bit further. One more. There we go. We're just going to ungroup that. Perfect. For those looking for a simplified version of creating an underbase white where your design is not as complex, can we just take all of the colors and turn them white? Yep, we sure can, just like this. Select same fill color, convert to white. Select same fill color, convert to white. Select same fill color, oh, that one's all selected. It was all, all grouped together. Convert to white. That is a white base. This is a simplified way to create a white base. The only drawback to doing this is that it's challenging to create a gap here for the white and the black. When you've printed your white base, you're creating a little bit of topography from where the white versus the shirt is. And getting your black ink to drop into a small channel like this can be challenging. If you were to remove that white base, choke it just a little bit, it makes getting this black to print into here a lot easier. So when you do the method from before, as we'll continue through with the rest of this video, you'll see how that will become an easier way to accomplish your end goal. All right, so I'm going to hit Control Z. We're gonna go backwards in history to where everything was at. Excellent, there it is. So we're gonna go back to what we did before and we are going to knock everything out again. Okay, we're going to click the divide, going to ungroup, and then what we're going to do is select same fill, convert to white. Actually, you know what, I'm gonna keep it that color for now, but unite it, I'll show you here in a little bit why. Select same fill color, Unite, and again, select same fill color, Unite, and again with the black, select same fill color, Unite. Now what we've done is we have everything perfectly knocked out from each other. So I can take my black and move it, take my gold and move it, Everything is its own individual piece, just like when we did the spot color separations, but now it's all uh, of a solid chunk. So I'm gonna go backwards in history, Command Z. We're going to select our highlight white. Select, same, fill color, unite. So one color I didn't work with. I'm going to click Command C. I'm gonna copy that. I'm gonna make a new layer. I'm gonna click OK. Going to paste in front here so again it's in the exact same spot it needs to be that is our highlight white when we get on press we are going to be printing a white base our colors and then we're going to finish with the highlight white so we need to make sure that this white lines up perfectly with our underbase and we'll show you here in just a little bit why that's important Next, we're going to select our colors. We're going to change them to white. We're going to, oh, we're also going to select the white and we're going to merge them. So now that white base is all one solid vector piece. So now we have two solid vector pieces, a white and the black. Now, what we have a choice on is either adding a non-printing stroke to our white, I'm going to use any of these spot colors as an example. Um, actually, you know what? Let's play, let's name it do not print. So what is a non-printing stroke? Simply a spot color that is used as a tool in a case like this to proverbially chip away at the edge of the white, but we never print it out, which is why I labeled it do not print. Now we don't necessarily want to just add a stroke to our white because when we do our white highlight, that's gonna create some weird looks. As we come in, we can see how that's creating a little bit of oddity, which in the end is fine. There's two ways to do this. 
both of which are acceptable. I like doing this with my black instead. So we're going to arrange, bring to front, and then with the same black that we're using, we're gonna give this a little stroke. Now the stroke we'll be using is 0.5. And this, you can see by how the aligned stroke is, will be going in and out of where the edge of the vector line is, meaning the actual amount of white will be chipping off with this outline is 0.25 of a stroke. It's a pretty tiny amount. Since we'll be putting this design on the auto, that's a very normal amount of choke to do. Now from here, there's a couple of ways we can do this. We can take our highlight white now, copy that, paste in front again. We can see from the outlines where they are, and we will still have that slight overlap. So we go from, as we look at the color, we can see that we are slightly choked where the color is, where the color's overlapping, and where the white highlight is, that's nice and smooth. So we'll have a very nice sharp edge to the base in the white. And when I talked earlier about that black coming up against this edge here, if we didn't have a highlight white, there could be just a little bit of black fuzziness on that edge line. But with the white highlight printing, it's going to cover up any, any potential mud that can develop. At this point, with this design, our white base is in essence done. So let's make sure that we fill out our registration mark information. We're gonna have design, design name, calling this bubble goldfish, and a date. Today's date is 425. We're not gonna give it the year. We're gonna make this an evergreen bit of content. Next, we want to do our ink colors in our print order. In this case, the first one down will be the white base. Two will be, uh, let's see, we're gonna print black early in the sequence. When we get on press, you'll see why we're doing that. Um, the third, we're going to print our teal. Four, we are going to print our orange. Uh, five is going to be pearl mix. And then six is going to be our highlight white. Let's rearrange that a little bit. Give each one its respective color, white. And for this, in order to see it, I'm going to change our, the color of our white just a little bit. Click OK. And now we can at least see that it's there black. We're using the spot color of black. Teal. So this is Pantone 7472. So I will change this to PMS 7472C. This one is our orange. That orange is Pantone 6019C. Number five is our, oh, it's not peel, it's pearl. Pearl mix. And then I'm going to actually hit return. Change that just a little bit. What's the color of our pearl mix? There we go. And number six is going to be our highlight white. Now, why am I using the same spot color for both of those? That's because we are going to save this as two files. Uh, we are going to save that as our white base, and then we're also gonna save that as our color printout. You'll see here in a little bit why that's important. Next, I want to change my active page size. Change that.
Actually, I'm going to delete that. Okay, turn that off. Oh, that's right. We're going to select that. We're going to select that. Copy. Since our registration marks were on this page here that we no longer need, I'm going to copy that, delete it, turn off that layer, paste in front, that's Command F. Oops, I need to select that layer and unlock it. Paste in front. We have registration marks there on both pages. Okay. So I'm now, oh, actually, I don't need my registration marks so far away on the bottom. I can move those up. Just need to have them far enough away so that I can tape them up without interfering with the design. Move that up a little more. We are good to go. All right, so now what I wanna do is I'm going to end up saving this as two separate files. This one we'll save, name it white base. And this one we would save naming color. So let's go ahead and do that now. We'll be using Image Print Red as our RIP software. So I need to save this as a PDF. So file, save as, and we are gonna go to all art, scroll way up, image print test files. So bubble goldfish, white base. Is that our white base? That is our white base. And we're gonna save that as a PDF. And it's going into our image print test file uh, print folder. Save the PDF. And there's our color. I'm gonna go up under uh, view, guides, clear the guides. And now we're gonna print out our color, file, save as, file, save as, color. Save. Next, now we're gonna bring up image print red. Make this a little bigger so that everyone can see it. And then let's see here. Bubble goldfish color. Drag this over here. And now this should start to look very familiar. This is the same thing that we looked at in our first video with the CMYK already turned off. And now all of our spot colors. So we have Pantone 6019. 7472, pearl, spot black, and the white highlight. Because this is all solid spot color, we don't need to worry about changing our LPI or our angle because there will be no halftone dots. So after confirming, oh, I made a goof there. No, that's this part's correct, that part's incorrect. I should have removed that because I ended up using the same color swatch for both. That's okay. I'll go ahead and make a change on my films. This is actually something that happened in a number of shops, and it's okay. I'm going to click Apply, and now we see all of our colors split out on their individual film. So I'm going to go here to White Base. I'm going to drag this in. A new page showed up, and there's our White Base. Now, all those colors that we had called out here the swatches that were here, they show up because those swatches are a part of the design. The same thing is going to happen and there's our spot black that we had that we're not going to print. We just want to print our white. So again, we're going to hit apply. Now there were steps that we could have taken to make sure that the white was just the white. And we could have done other things to make sure that it was correct on every film. I went through this a little faster without checking my P's and Q's, crossing my T's and dotting my I's. But that's okay. You saw a mistake that I made. Now hopefully you'll never need to make that mistake. All right, we're gonna click apply. One, two, three, four, five, six. You can see that the color that was there is now solid black. This is why RIP software, when working with spot color, is so convenient even though you are using a color in your spot color it goes to the rip software and the rip software recognizes it as needing to print out in black 
and that's it. What we do now is we'll go to our printer, in this case the Epson P900, and we will output our films. For those who want visual confirmation of what we did in Illustrator, here is the white base by itself on a black t-shirt. We did do a print flash print in order for this to have a good visual pop, so you have really good clarity of where the white is. When you look at the blue t-shirt, the white you see is the foundation for everything that was just printed on top of it. A 0.5 choke was perfect for what we were trying to accomplish today. If we were to try and dial this in a little further with properly tensioned screens, where everything is 25 newtons or higher, we would be able to make that choke that we put on the white base even thinner, as those high tension screens would be able to drop that ink even cleaner and more precisely than we were able to on this print. And that's it. You've learned how to create a white base and apply either choking or trapping techniques to ensure your prints are flawless. Remember, these steps are key to achieving professional quality screen prints. If you found this tutorial helpful, please like, subscribe, and share it with your fellow screen printers. Thanks for watching.